it's launch day for new Powerbox and it's 10 years almost to the day from the original's release date. This is the brand new Powerbox Competition SR2. I've actually been playing with this test unit for a couple of months, going through all of the software and verifying everything in flight. And all that I can say is, wow. Before we get into all that and how it does it, what it does, let's point out just some of the basic specs. The SR2 still has dual battery, optional dual receiver, redundancy, and all the basics we love, but it's smaller, can handle double the peak power. You can choose your output voltage from 6 volts all the way up to an unregulated 8.4. Gyro is optional, simply plug in an iGyro SAT, and the same goes for the GPS3. Loads of new software and programming features that we'll get to in a minute. Built up from a CNC aluminium case, it comes with a new, smaller CNC sensor switch. And oh yeah, did I mention the spectacular and bling external screen that's so bright you can even still easily read it out in direct sunlight. I'm excited about this one, you can probably tell. So bear with me and let's have a look at some of the new features as well as a super quick look at how everything works. Big question I hear, does it work with your radio? Yeah, it probably does. Whether that's a Powerbox Core, Jetty, Futaba, Spectrum, Multiplex, Graupner, or, well, any receiver that outputs a bus signal in any of those systems' languages. The best bit, it figures out which system is connected automatically, so no setup required. With such a cool large screen, they're able to pack in a load of handy information, like battery voltages, the current and minimum, current draw, voltage output, receiver status, gyro, you name it and it's probably on there. Accessing the menu is the same as normal, just from the new switch. Even though pretty much everything can be set straight from the radio if using a core or jetty. Starting in the general settings menu, the main feature is being able to choose the output voltage 6 volts, 7 volts, 7.8 volts, or unregulated. We can also reset part or all of the SR2 from this menu. With that set, Powerbox's recommendation is to set up using the Assistant, even if you're already a Powerbox Pro and don't really need the Assistant. The reason for this is that setting it in that way, everything is in the right order, with the right names, and makes plugging in an iGyro SAT, be that now or at any time in the future, super easy without having to reset anything. When you do, just make sure it's well secured at right angles and connected to the SR2's fast track port. If using a GPS3 as well, connect both devices into the fast track port using a Y lead. All wing types are set directly in the radio, and the SR2 can detect and figure out what goes where. Just set the basics of what's actually going on and how many outputs, servos, are needed for each of the main channels. The following screens show what channels are being detected for each surface and which outputs are being assigned for each of those servos. This completes the assistant, unless of course you're using an iGyro SAT in which case its orientation and stick inputs are also learned. Just follow the on-screen instructions that come on. Of course, you still have all the usual input mapping and output mapping menus in case you wish to add or update what is controlled by each of the radio's channels, inputs, or which socket on the SR2 you want the resulting surface to be connected to, output. Incidentally, the size of the screen comes in handy here, as with the increasing number of programmable features, there are ever more types of output options. To keep things simple and not have to scroll through a whole load of options, the output screen is now massively simplified, allowing you to basically filter the list into your desired function type, be that direct channels, so straight from the radio unaltered, gyro outputs or sequencer outputs, giving a much shorter list 
to surf through and choose from. Now, we start getting into the really fun new stuff though. Servo matching. The main matching screen is very recognisable from previous power boxes. Selecting the output to match and initialising it to learn the radio's endpoints before allowing you to either reverse or manually adjust the centre and endpoint of that servo. That's where the similarities end though. Manual matching makes the most of the huge screen and allows not only a large graphical interface to see what's going on, but for the first time providing five points as opposed to three for an even more precise setup. But I know that your eyes went to the other button. That's right, automatic matching. Unlike the manual matching, which adjusts the output you're in, Automatic has the current output set as the master, and you match others to it. Just select which outputs you want to be matched, and watch as the servos are tested multiple times until a perfect match is found. That just saved us so much setup time. Now, not much can top that, right? Well, how about having two separate independent sequencers? But why two? Easy. Sequencer A is set up in a similar way to how previous power box sequencers are generally set up for retracks and gear doors, where we simply set the switch channel and proceed to set up through the assistant, selecting the appropriate mode how many gear doors there are, and then the open and closed positions for each of the retracts and doors. Now, the second one. Sequencer B is free to be used for anything. Say, closing and latching a canopy. As this is a completely free setup and is entirely up to you what it's used for, there isn't an assistant, but that's okay. The manual setup is the same as for sequencer A, which I didn't show you yet, but it's a serious improvement on previous versions. Why? After selecting the switch channel and which function we're going to set first, that huge screen allows a load of information to be displayed graphically, which makes it super easy to read, understand and adjust as required. We're met with the two graphs for that particular function, or call it as you will, function, output, servo, retract, whatever. One graph is for the sequence in one direction and the other is for the reverse, so open and close. On each graph, there are seven points or steps that we can set however we want or need to. Moving one of those points up or down will adjust the position. So for example, how far open or closed a gear door is. While moving it to the right or the left will adjust the timeline. Or in other words, how long it takes to reach that point. In the case of a servo operated function, extending the time will also slow down the servo for that particular step. After all, the more time that it takes to elapse to reach the next point, the slower the servo must travel. If you want to leave a gap between opening and closing, simply leave one or several subsequent points or steps at the same position. The default graph is set for an overall duration of six seconds. However, by extending the last point, you can increase this overall duration as desired, and then just rejig all the other points along the way as necessary. If navigating down to the test button, which will change to exit once you actually hover over it, you can flip the switch on the radio to see the sequencer work for that particular function. Then just go back and repeat this same procedure for each of the desired functions, each with their own independent graphs. As soon as you've moved the first point a couple of times, it becomes very intuitive 
and the graphical interface really makes for a very visual and simple setup. With that said though, it may be beneficial to still write down roughly what you want each function to do relative to the others before you start programming. Personally, I find this really helps me get a clear vision of what I wish to achieve and what steps need to be set and in which order. Then, finally, of course, we have the gyro menu, which, being from an iGyro sat, is the same as we've gone over previously in my iGyro sat videos. So I won't repeat myself, it's all the same great features. All in all, this new competition, SR2, feels like Powerbox have really gone all in with every feature that they could throw at it, while being able to keep everything simple and even easier than previous versions, thanks to the intuitive, easy to read display and all the graphics along the way. All with now 22 server outputs and compatibility with, with what feels like any radio out there. This thing, I think, is going to be very popular. Not to mention bling. That's enough for now though. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the Powerbox Systems Competition SR2 and found the quick walkthrough helpful, especially if you're trying to set one up of your own. If you did, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.